Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at 9.30 um, for our workplace webinar. My name is Erin Kopeck, and I'm the Marketing Director for Extra Help. Um, today you are joining us with Tom Harness, um, and he will be introduced momentarily. Just a couple of housekeeping things before we begin. The call will last about one hour. Um, just so you know, you're set up in listen-only mode. Um, there will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the presentation, so feel free to type the questions in um, the messaging box, box, and I will relay that to Tom um, towards the end of the presentation. Um, so Tom is a U.S. Army veteran, a teacher, educator, and business owner with 15 years of combined experience. He's an avid supporter of empowering and educating business owners and leveraging all forms of technology to increase revenue and efficiency. He also gives back to the community through various organizations and boards. So I will turn it over to Tom and let him teach you a little bit about video for your business. Thank you so much for having me today um, and that great uh, introduction. I really appreciate that. Today what we're going to talk about is uh, video for your business. So we live in a digital world. We live in a digital age. And what that means is how are you representing yourself, your business, or your organization online? because it is very important. Uh, you know, we see all these funny videos, we see a lot of people just with viral videos, but what does that really mean for you as a business owner? That's what this is about. So I hope today as we go through this presentation, please, if you have lots of questions, um, you can put them over in the chat. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about at the end that I'm actually doing right now, we are simulcasting this on a new app called Meerkat and uh, Meerkat runs through uh, Android or iOS, iOS-based uh, phones, and it streams automatically any content that's going, uh, that you're presenting at that moment through your video camera on your phone. So I'm really excited to test this out. Right now, we've got two people watching on Meerkat. When I did a presentation at SIU last week, we ended up having around 200 people watching. So we shall see how well uh, we go with that. So. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, bang, bang, how to shoot your business. I thought the title would be really kind of fun because sometimes as business owners or when we're in our business, we'd love to just shoot it or get rid of it and, and put it away. But then I do the little nice little segue at the end and we talk about video. So let's get started. Let me move this off to the side here so I can. Give me just a second. That was better. All right. All right. Take one. Let the fun begin. Where to post video for social media, logistics of posting video, do's and don'ts, and getting people to see your video. Those are the four areas that we're going to talk about today. What I love about this picture that I have to the right with this gentleman with the peace sign is uh, this was done by a documentary film uh, student over at SIU. Uh, it's an amazing department, and they have lots and lots of uh, opportunity to, to promote their, their videos, their documentaries. So I kind of treated them as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur, like I do many of you that are listening here. I think we're all entrepreneurs at heart, and I think that's what you have to have when you go into thinking about using video for your business. So we're going to cover these four things today, and I hope that at the end of this, what I want to see is a plethora of all 17 of you that are watching right now doing some video on or at least one of the social media platforms that we talk about. So this guy right here, I mean, definitely outside his comfort zone, showing the peace sign, going a little grin. I love it because it's different. Uh, and, and that's what I want you to get out of this as well is, is having something more uh, motivating to try to get you to do something different because video is. It's hard. It's one of those things even I struggle with because I want to make sure that I step, out, step outside my comfort zone as well. All right. Take two, video sites to post to. So I want to go through and kind of talk about how, what, how and where, uh, what sites are the most relevant to, uh, to post to. Because there are a lot. And every business is different. So maybe the first thing, let me see. I don't have mouse control to do a little questionnaire. But, um, Let's have a let's let's get some questions here. How many of you are currently uh, using video for your business? You'll just message off to the side. Let's go here and let's take a look. You can use the 
Do you want to use the chat session or the questions? Yeah, you can use the, the chat function or the question, either one. All right, let's do the chat one. So let's just go in. I, want to, I actually want to know who is currently, let me type this in here, using video for their business <laughs> or organization. So let's get an idea. Go ahead and just type in there. All right, it looks like mostly everyone's starting to type in the questions box. And we okay. have some people saying that they're excited, they're ready to use it. Um, some couple people are not. Kind of hit and miss. They're all excited. To I don't see those. I'll, 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 work. I'll have you relay those, those answers to me. You want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. So where, where are we at? All right, we are getting ready to, and we are excited With to the try. Answering. And one person said they are a realtor, and they are looking forward to use it for generating additional business. Oh, okay, so we got a realtor. Excellent. Somebody on here says they're not sure how to use it in their business, so that's why they're tuning in today. Okay. Um, Excellent. A couple people said they're currently using it, and a couple people said that they're not at this time. So, Okay, so let's go with that. So we kind of got everybody all over the place a little bit, but at least I have some examples from real estate and some people that are actually using it. So let's start with the number one place to put videos, YouTube, right? Everybody puts video on YouTube. It's also tied into Google. Now here's what's great about YouTube. When you put your videos on YouTube, it also helps something called SEO your search engine optimization. And what that means is the words that you put in there, the keywords, what you're wanting to show them in this video, that helps relate material back to your website that helps increase your SEO. Why do we care about your SEO? We care about that because it helps you move your rankings up uh, in Google, Bing, Yahoo, and we want to be the most popular uh, business online, right? Because that means People, customers, potential customers are wanting to come to us for the services that we provide or whatever we sell. So YouTube, when you're making your videos, absolutely positively, you should be putting and uploading your videos to YouTube. One of the missed opportunities here is, is you have a section that you can fill out. You've got the location. You've got what is it about. You've got keywords. All of those play into how people are going to see it and how many times it's going to get viewed. The purpose of video overall is to engage at a different level, um, entice different senses of people. We've got visual and auditory. They're going to remember it more. However, if we don't let people know or they see it, doing video means absolutely nothing other than a waste of our time. So we want to maximize that. We want to make sure that the video that we're doing has relevance, we're getting it up, and we're actually making sure that people are seeing it, much like a website, much like social media content. It's great to have these ideas and put them out there. However, if we don't have a plan and nobody sees it, it's been a missed opportunity, waste of money, and possibly your time. So YouTube, absolutely put it up. Next one, Facebook. Facebook is a power horse, right? Everybody's on Facebook. Businesses are on Facebook. Brands are on Facebook. People that uh, brand themselves are on Facebook. So what does that mean for video? Well, the next two to three years, Facebook is really putting a lot of time and money into, into video. So you're going to see a lot more opportunity to, to see video in the feeds. You're probably going to see an increase in sponsoring those videos. They're going to make it a lot easier to kind of uh, sponsor your business videos in there as well. However, if you've done any video on Facebook, you'll know or even any promoted posting on Facebook, they have this rule, this rule of 20% text. Now, this 20% text makes it impossible at times to actually sponsor or boost a post or video. That means that if you take your video screen and over 20% of it has text, they are going to deny it. Not fun. Uh, we manage a lot of, uh, of accounts for uh, clients, and we run into this a lot because we want to give them information, but we also have to go within the guidelines of Facebook. So video is not as easy and forthcoming when you kind of do a produced video and post it on Facebook. You're going to get a much bigger reach and increase 
from Facebook posting video than you probably will from any other site. Um, I'm hoping that many of you currently are posting some videos to Facebook. So let's ask the next question, which will be, how many of you are actually or have you posted video to Facebook? Whether or not you've promoted or boosted, but how many of you have actually done that? So I'll wait for a response. Looks like we have one of the Chamber of Commerce says they have. A couple other people said okay. they have. We have the Chamber of Commerce on here, right? Oh, I have someone from a forestry company say that they're currently using YouTube and have posted videos to Facebook. One of the recreational centers in the area said they have had great success using Facebook videos. Excellent. Um, now, one more. One of the realtors said that she has used um, flipgrams um, regarding open houses for her clients. Oh, it's great. We got an expert in our midst. Flip, uh, flipgrams, those are great. They use a, combo, a, combo, uh, a compilation of video to put. You can actually use image as well. Uh, to stream them together to give uh, a presentation. It looks really nice. So those are good. All right. So some of you have already used video. All right. So on Facebook. Let's go to the next medium. Instagram. Instagram is owned by Facebook. So therefore, anytime you post something to Instagram, you're actually helping Facebook as well. However, when you post to Instagram, it doesn't actually post a video, video, actual video, to Facebook. What it does is it posts a link. So now we're getting into how do we post our video to each one of these to get the maximum uh, value out of it. Because when we go through our stream, what we want to see is actual video. We don't want to see the text all the time with the link. Some of us will stop and do that and click on it. Most of us will not. So Instagram, you're having to post your video to it directly. Facebook, same thing. YouTube, same thing. So we're starting to see a pattern here that, uh-oh, we've got a lot of time that we're going to have to take because we're going to have to upload these individually. Let's take a look at the next one. Twitter. I'm a huge Twitter fan. Um, I use it for photos, video, connecting with my favorite local people, TV, radio, news. I use it all. I follow some people outside of the area just to get new content, but Twitter is going to be another force to be reckoned with when it comes to video. Um, the problem with Twitter is you're, a, you're one tweet amongst thousands that go out every second, right? So posting your video comes to something we're going to talk about later, which is hashtags. So we want to, again, make sure that our video that goes out is definitely going to be seen by people that we want. We don't want to just send it out and then be done. So Twitter, another great place to post your video. Again you're going to have to post it individually. And I'm going to actually make this even harder on you guys because we have requirements and restrictions on each one of these as for time. Fine. All right. So I just want to ask this question. How many of you are familiar with Vine? And for those of you that are wine drinkers, that's not what I'm talking about here. It's an actual social media medium. Well, it looks like we have lots coming in of people not familiar with Vine. Okay. A couple have, but looks like most have not. Okay. So Vine is a fairly new medium. It's all video. Um, it covers uh, news, mm -hmm. comedy, dance. Um, just different types of, of content, video content. The demographic for Vine is much younger, but it is expanding into an older audience. So with Vine, you're probably looking at an age group of probably 16 to 18, all the way up to probably 25 or 30. It's a great demographic. Okay? It's a younger demographic. Vine has a lot of profanity sometimes. Uh, Vine also has a, a, a lot of dancing, singing, comedy. What I think of Vine, Vine is that video outlet 
that lets your company, your brand, you have a personality. This is where it's kind of funny. This is where it's kind of interesting. And you want to get out there outside your comfort zone and outside your normal market. Now, Vine isn't going to be clearly defined by a local demographic. For example, Southern Illinois, which is where I'm located. Uh, Vine's probably not going to get you a lot of content or leads or customers coming in based on that. What it is going to do is it's going to brand your business outside. So the cool thing about video also is when you're doing your video and you're posting it, it's expanding because it's everywhere, right? It's all online. It's everywhere around the world. So you have this, it goes out to all the four corners, and for whatever reason, it starts replicating, and then it ends up kind of working its way back to the center location. It's kind of like a boomerang effect. It goes out, and then it comes back. And Vine is amazing, uh, a lot of fun. It's very, it's just different than any of the other mediums because, again, it lets you have a personality. It lets you be comfortable outside your comfort zone. You're going to hear me say that a lot because that's what video is. It's really making you go outside your comfort zone. Uh, and I hope that we can actually end up doing that for you guys, for all the business owners. The last one, Google+. Plus. Now, I don't think you have to focus too much on Google+, Plus and posting video to it, but again, um, I'm all about you have to have reasons for why you're doing what you do. Google Plus, again, it's tied in with Google. When you post video on this and you put content along with it, word, text, hashtags, it's going to relate and help your SEO. So it's going to be able to post. Google's going to say, hey, there's all this content, there's this video, this quality content that's actually being posted about your business. And then what it'll do is it'll say, oh, you're, you're posting new content. You're posting, posting really good content. And as you go up in the rankings, that's why. So, uh, websites are just not static anymore. You can't just put a website up and leave it there. You have to have a blog. You have to have other relevant content. So video lets you do that. And it gives a visual storytelling for what you're doing. Um, before we move on, are there any questions? Or does someone have another um, social media network that they think uh, that they want to know if they should be posting to or they want to know a little bit more about. I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to, to post those on other social media mediums. And while you're doing that, I'm actually going to check out Meerkat here and see what we've got here. So we got, oh, we've got Kevin Huntsberger watching us online on Meerkat. Thank you, Kevin, for joining us. We've got five people following us on Meerkat now. We have a couple people mentioning LinkedIn and Pinterest, um, including it on their own website. Okay. Uh, those are all great. So let's talk about Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is really what Pinterest is meant to is to drive traffic back to your website. Okay? Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. So. We'll tie that into the website. Yes, your video needs to be on your website. Why? It will allow people to go back to it, drive traffic back, because the video is meant to draw traffic back to the website or to basically get them connected to your website to get them interested in other concepts or other ideas or other things that you're selling on your website. Um, Pinterest primarily is kind of blog related, not so much video. You can use video, but video has not taken off as well on Pinterest. Um, so we talked about the website. And what was the other one? Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay. I think LinkedIn, where videos come in handy, are for portfolios and actually give it an overview of your business. You don't see a lot of video on LinkedIn. And I don't think there really needs to be. Uh, it's more of a networking connection. And right now, they've not pushed, and the drive has not been to do more video connecting. They want people to have that, that connection with just text and, and inner, inner engagement of just commenting and engaging on posts and um, trying to think of some other uh, articles, news articles. Uh, that's really what it's meant for. It's more text driven. That doesn't mean, again, that it's not going to be uh, a viable medium in the future. But right now, where I think that you should be putting your time and effort in are probably in these right here, these uh, six, if not the top four or five right here. Okay. 
Uh, let me see if there's any other questions on here. Can you mention or touch on how long the videos typically are for Vine? Well, you are stealing my thunder. We're getting into that next one. Hold on just a second. All right. So take three, the video requirements. Now, many of you might have a short attention span. Obviously, we know that those of us that have kids or even ourselves, we know that a younger generation has a very short attention span. So the reason why we have some of these requirements for video uh, for some of these social media outlets is, is twofold. Space, video takes up a lot of space. You'll find that as you start making videos. Uh, second, it is attention spans. People want something that they can get connected to in three to five seconds. I mean, you've got to catch, capture somebody in your video three to five seconds. Otherwise, they're gone, and that's important. So let's talk about those requirements. So Facebook, unlimited. Right now, there is no requirement on a video. However, you do not want to have a video that's really going to be over 90 seconds. That's a minute and a half, right? If you have something that's two to three minutes, you better engage them the very first probably five to ten seconds. And you better keep their attention because people are just not going to stay with you. So make sure that you, when the video is done and you upload it, is there a connection? Is there somebody that, you know, have a friend look at it and say, hey, would you watch this video from start to finish? Because you might need to break it up. Um, sometimes, and I'm just as guilty as this, I like it, I just want to get it up because of time, right? Again, if you put it up and it's not being seen, then what's the point? You have to think about the end user and are they going to actually watch it. I talk about this in some of my other presentations and, and speaking engagements that I do, and that's as business owners and marketing people, sometimes we're in the forest, we can't see the trees, right? So we've got to step back and get some outside um, uh, views and point of views of it because, again, video is so time consuming and it can be costly if you outsource it. So maximize it as much as you can. Twitter, you've got 20 seconds, right? 20 seconds to, to capture someone and tell a story. And that's what I love about Twitter. Uh, I posted one today with my daughter. Uh, today's obviously tax day. Um, so uh, if you want, you can check that out uh, on Twitter. Uh, look up iTom Harness, and uh, there's a video with my daughter and I giving a little shout out to tax day. Um, a lot of the business videos that we've done for Twitter are, are mostly kind of in between education, informal, and goes back to that vine where it's a voice and, and giving the business character, uh, being known for something, right? Um, so today is Bowtie Wednesday. Um, I don't do video for Bowtie Wednesday, but I usually post a photo or an image, but I brand it. And then everybody wants to know from that point forward, am I wearing a bow tie every Wednesday? So that's what we want. We want people to connect with us, right? So if your video has something unique that you consistently do or that brands you, that will help uh, moving forward. So Twitter, you've got 20 seconds. Now, Facebook, Twitter, a lot of these, you can actually link your other accounts. Remember how I told you that if you post to these video accounts, sometimes it'll send a link to the other ones. I don't like that. I like unique um, URLs. I like unique video. So I would still propose that you upload your video uh, to each one of these individually. Instagram. All right, now we're getting down there, right? So now we're going to Instagram where it's 15 seconds. So you've got 15 seconds on Instagram. Now, when you take a photo, or sorry, when you take a video and you go through the process of Instagram of actually creating the video and you can add filters and you can make all these really cool things, um, it will actually give you a slide bar and it will show you, slide it over, to how, what 15 seconds you want. So let's say you just take a video that's two minutes long and you only want 15 seconds. You can actually manually slide that over and choose the 15 seconds out of the video that you want. So they, they try to make it as easy and seamless as possible. However, it still becomes a little time consuming and you still want to know what content. So even if you do a whole three minute video, you can go in and find a section that you want to focus on that really basically hits the point of what you wanted to say. And then 15 seconds and you post it. Uh, Instagram is nice because you can't have those filters. So if you've got a low light or it's dark or you want to make it look a little bit or stand out a little bit better, you can use filters on Instagram. All right, so now 
we go down a little bit more. Vine, the one that I've most recently gotten excited about. Uh, that one is six seconds. All right, so you're kind of seeing the point here. What can you do in six seconds? I mean, let's just for just for our sakes right now, we'll just we'll just kind of give you an example of six seconds, right? What can be done? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, done, right? So there's a, it's going to be really, really hard to put something in that. So what do you do? Um, you can do a series, and that's usually what Vine does. It's usually a section of three, two, four, six, so two, three-second sections of a video, and it goes from one point to the next. Now, again, I don't want you to get discouraged. I would love for you to take a look at Vine. There is a lot, a lot of the trending stuff, a lot of the, the ones that get the most views, the highest views, are probably profanity, and they're probably not what you want to be associated with. However, there is a section of it that I think is very viable, the news, the family, that are a lot of fun, and I think this is a medium for that 16 to kind of 30, 16, 25, 30-year-old group that will be transitioning on up uh, as they get older. That's what I want you to be considered, but, bleh, sorry, that's what I want you to, uh, to take into consideration is that that section right there, that group, will be moving up, and they will be potential buyers. They will be buying homes. They will be, you know, go. I think we had forestry. They will be business owners for chamber. So make sure that buying in that six seconds, that you really maximize that and try to get to the core and have fun with it. That's what, to me, what buying's about. It's about having fun. Um, I'm sure that our real estate person that's on here uh, has some great stories or they have some misconceptions. Sometimes the best videos are those ones that you address with people's concerns and you just hit it head on uh, and, and let people know that no. Uh, one of the things I think of when I think of real estate is you know we always talk about how they're supposed to bake cookies and stuff like that when you walk in and you have that smell and it makes it homey. I mean it would be fun to, to play on that. It's like when people walk in what's that smell uh, and then at the very end you have a picture of right a, a plate of brownies or cookies or something. Um, but that would be some, that's an example, but have fun with it. Uh, Vimeo. We didn't talk about Vimeo in the previous ones because um, I don't think there's really a lot of, uh, of people that are going to upload it for, um, for customers to see. This is more of a B2B kind of thing, but what I wanted to put on here is if you do a video or a presentation like we're doing here, Vimeo is a great place to upload it so that way you have access to it to distribute throughout your other social medias. So you can link it back to this. Because again, when I talk about space, video is going to take up a lot of space. Uh, and that's why we upload these to these social media sites, because we don't have to worry about the size and the space of it, right? When we upload it to our website, um, whether you know it or not, your, your website only gives you so much space uh, on a virtual server, on an actual server, a physical server, that you can upload to, and you will max out if you start using a lot of video. So what's great is you can use these, this Vimeo, even Facebook now allows you this. You can embed those videos onto your website. So now you're not taking up a lot of space. You're basically housing these videos off. Now, the pros and cons of that are what is your objective? Most of your, objective, most of your objectives should be to drive traffic to your website or your content that's going out needs to tell people to do something. You have to have a call to action. So the video should say, call us now. Come to, you know, think of it as old traditional TV advertising, but we're flipping it online. So my verdict is I like to drive traffic to the website. I think that's where the value is, and I think the more engagement that you have with your customers and potential customers, those are actually going to be solid leads and actual revenue producing people that will come in and actually uh, give you a nice return on investment for doing some of this video. So Vimeo, actually we'll take a break here for a second and we'll ask a question. Um, how many of you use Vimeo to upload your content now? I'm going to take a section here and start an answering some of the questions that are online on Meerkat. I'm not ignoring you, Kevin. I promise you. 
Looks like we don't have any users of Vimeo at this time. A couple people said they are using YouTube. Okay. YouTube is a great one, and I think that's the best one because, it, one, uh, once again, it, it helps with your SEO. It drives traffic, and it, uh, it helps your rankings on, on Google. Um, I got a question from Kevin on Harness Tech Edge. Should we post to YouTube and the link to social media or just direct uploads to the social media site? Um, that's a great question. I think it really depends on the video. Um, I think that you need to upload each individual video to each social media site. I still think that you make links going out because, again, the more options and opportunity people have to actually view your, your, um, your video, the better the chance. So I think the answer, Kevin, it would be to post them individually to each one but still utilize those link options. I do that a lot on Twitter, especially, even though I post to Facebook. Uh, to, to um, Instagram and Vine, I will still post those videos, those video links out uh, through Twitter. All right. Google Plus is another one. It's unlimited. You don't need unlimited space. However, I don't want you to focus a lot of time on that one unless you absolutely have someone dedicated to it. The more video that you have out there to these different uh, demographics, the better chance that you have. However, we need to make sure that we're maximizing the time spent. As a business owner, you can't do all these. So when I look at this video requirement, where should you be? My recommendations would be Facebook by far, uh, Twitter, uh, obviously YouTube, make sure you have those, Instagram, and Vine. Um, if I had to pick the top three, I would say YouTube, Facebook, and probably, it's hard because every business is different, I would say Instagram. Those would be the ones that I would focus on. Uh, just for a demographic of, of actual paying customers, uh, of actual return on investment. Um, before we move forward, are there any other questions on the video requirements um, as far as what you can and can't do? There was something, Tom. How does Hootsuite come into play when you're using video? Oh, okay, excellent. Um, Hootsuite is a, for those of you that might not know, it is a content management system that allows you to um, schedule your tweet, your tweets or your, sorry, your tweets, your Facebook posts. Um, it doesn't allow um, Vimeo, it doesn't allow Vine, and it doesn't allow Instagram. So you can post to like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Uh, the problem is it does links only. So we're back to that question of, how do we get it out there? Well, you're going to have to actually upload it individually because when it goes through the feed, it's actually going to show as a video. That's what we want. We want people to go through and say, whoa, what's that? Well, that's a video. And that first clips, they're going to be like, okay, so we got the title, the content, and the little picture of the, of the play button and the video, and that's what they're going to want to click. If you use Hootsuite, you don't get that. What you're going to get is a link, and you can't actually upload video. So. Video doesn't work well and play well with Hootsuite. It's, it's separate, so you're still going to have to upload it individually. So we're back into that time parameter. Was there anything else? I think that was it. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. All right, so I want to give you some examples. So it's going to take us off here a little bit. So um, I want to show you some actual video examples from the different uh, social mediums. So bear with me here. All right, so let's take a look at Instagram. And we're going to pop in and out. So, All right, I did this uh, chamber presentation. And this is on my, as you can see over here, it's on the Harness Tech Ad, my business. I presented at the chamber a while back. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what this one was on. Do you remember what this one was about? Um, you know, I can't remember. I was there, but I can't remember. I was, yep, I see you right there. I've done so many of these, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so what I like to do, again, I, I want to practice what I preach. So we're doing a webinar, so lucky for you guys, I can't make you do something that I can record. Um, I'd love for you to record something and send it in and share it with me at, at the end of this. That would be great. So here's what I did, short video. As you can see, they're very excited to dance and get outside the comfort zone. Come on. Step outside that comfort zone. Sorry that you can't see this online on your pad. Les better be back there. All right. So you'll notice something right here. This was 11 months ago. 
Uh, I tagged the Dunn Richmond Economic Development Center. So anybody that wants to look at something for that specific location on Instagram, I'm going to show up. So same for you, uh, for your business, if you tag your business. I use specific hashtags, which we'll talk a little bit more uh, later. And um, we had 22 likes on this one on the actual business page, and then uh, we had one comment. So for all intents and purposes, this was okay. It was early on when we first started doing this. But this is what I like. It's having fun. It's getting outside your comfort zone because the video is also not about you as the business owner. You don't have to be in everything. Um, and, and, and this allows you to tag people. This allows you to connect with other people. And this was a lot of fun. And if I remember, you had some pretty good dance moves, right? Yeah, it was a blast. I bullied. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at the next one. Let's look at a Facebook one. All right. Now, this one is a little bit different that I want to talk to you about. So um, I, uh, I have a business partner that owns Megabytes, and he went to the city, uh, the Heron City Hall, and they had problems with their sign. It's a little bit outside of what he actually does, but he does know how to work on these because it is IT and it's technology. So they were nice enough to actually put this uh, on their sign. I went and grabbed a quick video, and I'm going to show you what I did in probably about five minutes. It was a piece of cake. Uh, so let me we'll start back here. This was an image you already had, and we'll play this from beginning to end. Nothing amazing, right? Simple, to the point. Um, and it was allowed people to connect with him and see him in a different way. So it was kind of a, it was kind of fun. So we, we really enjoyed this uh, doing this one. So what I did was on my iPhone. I use an iPhone. Um, I already have his images uh, in a Google Drive. So I went over. I just took this widescreen, scanned it, which I video recorded about I don't know 10 seconds. I think is what it was. I went in, uh, edited it on my phone, added the the image. And then I uploaded it directly to Facebook. It took me probably five minutes to do that whole concept. Okay, so five minutes to do this. Now, I can't promote this one because remember, we go back here. There is over 20% text on this on this on the screen right here, right? So you can't choose what slide. It just knows that there's 20% text. So I can't promote this one. So what I have to do now is I have to organically get people to share this, like it, and comment on it. So that's where you have to have a very, um, a very good user base, um, active user base for your Facebook in this case, uh, to actually uh, engage and post it and comment. Now, how do you do that? Well, a couple of things that can help make this organically grow. You can get your uh, employees involved. You get three people, I don't care if it's a family member, an employee, or someone in another area uh, outside of Southern Illinois or wherever you live, you can actually increase your, your reach, how many people actually see it, by about 30 to 40 percent by just having three people like or share. Those are huge numbers because we're talking the difference between um, 100 people seeing it and three to 500 people seeing it. Uh, now, the other thing is we talk about engagement and we're talking about uh, liking. Don't get caught up in that because I want to tell you something. Uh, when I post or I do a lot of stuff and you might be the same, we are seeing content over and over. We're not always liking and we're not always sharing it, but guess what? It's like a billboard on, on, a, on a busy interstate. We see it over and over enough, it sinks in our head. I've had so many people that don't necessarily like or comment or share but when I see them in person or I go out and actually physically talk to them, they know about certain things. They know about Bowtie Wednesday. They know about Red Shirt Friday. They know about a lot of things, not because they're liking and sharing it. They still see it. So there's a lot of value in what you, uh, what you can't see and what people are actually seeing and not, you know, uh, not actually telling you by liking and posting and sharing. So remember that as you go off on these campaigns. Because People uh, are kind of voyeuristic, I guess is a good word, right? 
Um, we want to see the train wreck. We want to see the car wreck, but we don't talk about it or we don't want to say anything, but we still remember it. That's what you want. You want to have enough of this content going out to be memorable. Video does that for you. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at Vine. And I chose a, a, a PG one on this one. Okay, so uh, I'm part of the Heron Festa Digital Marketing Committee. We do all the online marketing for Heron Festa. We have this promotion going on right now. It's called the Golden Ticket. Now, the Golden Ticket uh, is this experience like no other. Uh, you get a hotel and you get you know tickets to the show. You get a limousine. You get a night in a. Um, I think I already said you get a night in a hotel. Food. You get Big Macs for a year, one a week for a year. You get Pepsi products for a year. It's amazing. Um, Anyways, we did a promotion, and we went. We partnered with uh, River Radio, Withers Broadcasting. Uh, we partnered with a lot of other media outlets. And what we did was we went around, kind of giving the experience and sharing that with people. I hired a new person. His name is Vince Cole. Amazing. He's actually a master at Vine, uh, and I'm very, I'm very happy to have him part of my team because he's amazing. We've been learning a lot. So what he's done is I took this slow mo video. And I posted this, but I didn't get much of a, of a reaction out of it. I didn't get a lot of engagement. Um, so what he did was, he has a process, because he's a Vine master. He overlaid this with this music. He went in, found the trending topics, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. He found the tr trending topics, tagged that, put it in there. Now I'm going to tell you something, because I'm still amazed uh, about how well this worked. Uh, if you go down here, right here, We've had 109 people like it. We've had 31 people revine it. We've had 51,428 loops. That means how many people has viewed it, right? Just this one. Uh, it's blown my mind. Now, putting yourself out there also warrants dealing with criticism and stupid comments and anything like that. Don't worry about it. Usually they're just mundane. Remember, five seconds of fame, right? If you don't draw attention to it, it just moves on. We've gotten a lot of feedback on just this one individual vine. So needless to say, uh, Vince will probably be doing some trainings here before too long on using vine. Uh, but it's, it's amazing how this turned out. And again, there's no, no rocket science about this at all. I took a slow-mo. We cut it down put some music to it, and we put it out there. Now, the other thing is, remember, this is probably, this is 51,000 loops that are worldwide. Now, that doesn't necessarily translate back to return on investment, but it does talk about branding and actually that boomerang effect of getting out there and then it coming back. The more content you put out there, the more opportunity you have to connect with leads that will indirectly come back here. Um, just don't warrant because if it's not isolated in Southern Illinois that it's not worth it. No. We've had many people that have come back uh, and given us leads, clients, referrals, uh, especially if you're, if you're U.S. based. We are U.S. based. We can actually do digital marketing for any type of business. Um, it just comes down to communication, how we're going to communicate with you. But this was a perfect example of just something silly, um, not distasteful, no swear words, no swear music. Uh, that's actually panning out to be really good. We're actually getting contacted by some of these people for, for different things, uh, sponsorships and wanting to connect with us and um, tickets, and that's what, it's a, that's what it's about. Not everything you put out there is going to give you an instant gratification and an instant return, but this Vine was amazing. We had a good time with it, and we've got more to come. So if you get a chance, follow the Heron Festival Vine. Uh, let's go to the next one. Vimeo. Now, this is another uh, friend of mine that uses Vimeo more than I do for video. And uh, his name's Todd Ellis. And what Todd does is he puts all his uh, stuff online so that way he can review it, send it out. Um, he makes them public once they are available. But this is an example of a car dealership. And all these that go up online, he doesn't have to worry about space. So let's take a look at this. 
Water Logs Hyundai of Cape Girardeau would like to thank you, Southeast Missouri, for helping us achieve our sales goals in March. We said take it or leave it, and you took it. And this month, we continue to offer you the best in the car buying experience and in service. Like a 2015 Elantra SE just 16370 or a 2015 Sonata SE just 19773. Visit us online or in person to find out why folks from St. Louis to Jonesboro, Arkansas are buying their Hyundais right here in Cape on Seamless Drive. Give us a shot. You will not regret it. Now, why do I show you this? I'm showing this because this is what's awesome because a lot of you probably already do TV commercials or some of you have done them. Why not reuse, repurpose the money that you spent on these commercials to get access to them and use them and distribute them through social media? Because guess what? Not only can you redistribute these as many times as you want over a period, once they're out there, they're going to be viewed over and over, indirectly, directly, by thousands of people, right? So if you're making produced commercials, get access to them, ask for them. You can still distribute those online, and you can do them, you know, we try not to overdo it. I would say every 10 days I would put a video on rotation. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We might be a little bit more aggressive coming up in the late summer and maybe post a video every seven days. However, make sure that you're utilizing all the services that you've had. Uh, you know, if it's digital print, get that for social media. But for video, think about any of the video that you've produced already or that you've liked. Just because it's, you think it's gone, ask the, t uh, the radio station, or sorry, ask the TV station to give you access to that and you can repurpose that. It's a great tool. You paid for it. Now, some of them, you'll have to look at um, what their usage rights are because a lot of them don't give up those rights. Some do, but you just need to ask. Then you've already got content ready to go, and then you can break it down. So it's a great opportunity to reuse what you already have. All right, let's take a look at YouTube. All right. YouTube. So here's the bank. I try to come up with all these different types of uh, scenarios for different industries. So let's take a look at this one. This one is a uh, DeCoin State Bank scholarship. So this was just promoting community service. Some of the videos you might want to do are, again, not about you. They're about what you're involved in. So let's take a look at this one. Now, this one's kind of a semi-produced. This is one that anybody can do because it's basically done in an iMovie format. And iMovie is where you can actually use still images, video, it's got all the transitions, and you put it up. Now, that was one minute and nine seconds, and it felt like a long time, right? Oops, sorry. It felt like a long time, right? So, again, remember, attention span. Make sure that you keep people's attention. But that one probably could be created in about an hour, maybe two hours that, for that, that particular YouTube video. Okay? All right. Go into Twitter, which I like. Load here. Now, um, I'm a huge craft beer fan, and I got the opportunity to uh, be reached out to by this company called Spinshill. And spin chill is a device that's supposed to uh, go ahead and, and chill your bottle, can, or wine bottle in an X amount of time if it's been warm. Uh, I did a review of it, and I tested it. And uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, not because I got to drink, but it was a lot of fun 
because uh, I got the, my first product to review. And I put it up here. I put it on all my social media outlets. But I had to break this one down. And I'll show this one. It's 14 seconds. So when I got it. My new spin chill just came in. Chills drinks 20 times faster. Can't wait to try this bad boy out. All right, so kind of cheesy, kind of corny. However, what this did was it allowed me to create a partnership with them, and now I have another partner that likes and follows and retweets my stuff. Um, I did this whole series of um, reviews, and I put them up on Vine and Facebook, and I kind of edited and put some stuff together. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but not a lot. They can be very produced or not produced, and the, the results are probably going to be about the same. Um, so there's an example of how it looks on on uh, Twitter, and then we'll talk about what all these hashtags mean. All right, so those are my examples. Does anybody have any questions about the examples before we move on and we almost wrap this up? Um, I do have a couple questions. One about the music. How do you apply the music, and what are the copyright violations? Oh, that's great. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. Um, some of these apps actually will let you use uh, legally your um, iTunes accounts, and I'm, I'm not an Android uh, person, so I apologize, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that the app does the same on, on the Android device. What, excuse me, what happens is um, you can use X number of seconds of a song basically to put out there, and it's legal, right? Which, when you get into trouble is on YouTube, when you use an entire song for a background or you don't cite a song. Um, so the video, the, the songs that go on there can be added through an app. They can be added through like um, uh, a movie editing software like iMovie, which is what I use. It's very simple. Um, and it incorporates your iTunes library. Uh, but you do have to be careful um, because you can't use an entire song, but you can use certain seconds. And it, there's really no, there are copyright standards. If you go online, nobody follows them. This is what happens. Um, if you're using something entirely and it becomes pretty much popular and famous, what's going to happen is you're probably going to get asked to take it down. The big thing is, is if you're asked, remove it. It's probably already served its purpose. I don't, I, I am kind of aggressive when it comes to that. I'm more willing to put myself out there and I let my clients know ahead of time what we do. Um, the other thing is, if you use iMovie, they've already got songs, uh, copy-free songs that you can use. You can go online and download copy-free background music as well. Um, there is public domain music. You can just Google public domain music. Um, there are some of the like classical musics that are public domain. There's no copyright on it. Right on them. Right on them. On them. You can. And it's a great question. Whoever asked that, it's an excellent question because you have to be careful. Um, Typically, artists nowadays, they like the fact that some of their music is used on social media because it basically gets people to like their songs even more and go out and buy them. So that's another opportunity on that. All right. So let's go through some do's and don'ts real quick. Tom, we have about five minutes. We have about five minutes. Okay. So let's go through this. Um, do invest in a tripod, definitely. Check your audio. Make sure that it's, the sound is good. Make sure lighting is set. Make sure people can actually see what they're supposed to see. Have a script. Have something to work on. Um, the unscripted ones waste your time. So write out what you want to do. Make sure that in these videos, you brand your business. Make sure your organization is clearly seen, whether that's by a shirt, a logo in the background. Brand your business. Don't annoy your audience. Make sure that you know your audience and what, your, what your video you're publishing is going to be something they want to see. And don't do it over and over unless that's what your audience wants. Don't expect a viral video. This is the number one question I get asked when it comes to video. Hey, will you help me make a viral video? No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, don't share one time only. Don't just put all your eggs in one basket, put it out, and think that it's going to happen. Keep putting it out there. Keep putting this video. Share as much as you can. Okay? And don't give up. Uh, and don't become a perfectionist. Many people will waste time. What they'll do is they will you know, nitpick the video and spend hours, days, weeks, months to try to make it perfect. Have a cutoff point. Give yourself X number of time 
and put it out there. Because what I will see is people will not put something out, and I think it's better to have something out there than not, right? We've also heard that, um, that saying, bad press is just as good as good press. Well, you know, having a video and having an okay video is better than not having anything at all. And then I put at the bottom, video is all about, actually social media is all about stepping outside your comfort zone. Do things that you wouldn't normally do. People know that, they respect it. All right, getting people to watch. If it is press worthy, please send out a press, uh, press release. If it's a, if it's a community service-based video, let people know. Send them the link. Hashtags. Hashtags are a whole other class, but hashtags are what make uh, Vine and Twitter work. You need to make sure that you know what's trending, which is the next one and also what hashtags are locally in your, your region, the actual uh, demographic that you're selling to. Um, create strategic partnerships like I did with SpinChill and other people. Start liking and sharing other businesses, other followers' uh, content, and start a network. It's like a network within a network, and that helps you grow. And then I put, but take seven, but wait, there's more. Um, Meerkat and Periscope. Meerkat's the one on the left, Periscope's the one on the right. These are live streaming, and all they do is they send out a tweet when you're actually live streaming like I'm doing right now, and then it lets people know, and people can follow you. So right now we've had up to seven people follow. I think it's because we're during the workday. Four people are still watching, so I lost three. Kevin had to go, I think, run, so that's not too bad. So we had four. But live streaming is another great way to do this. So when would you use this? Trade show. Maybe live, uh, live Meerkat or Periscope your trade show and let people see you interact with your clients. All right, we got a little bit for questions. Uh, I know I kind of went fast at the end. I wanted to really try to give you an overview, and I hope this was very helpful for you. If you have any questions, I'm on all social media. Um, my uh, phone number is at the bottom of this, 314-884-1192, but you can follow me, ask questions online. So. What questions do we have? We do have one. What advice would you have for a nonprofit? We do have one. What advice would you have for a nonprofit? Who currently well, nonprofits are great. Um, the one thing, oh, go ahead. They currently don't have a budget to hire anyone. They currently don't have a budget to hire anyone. Uh, just do it internally. Get some of your people on board that are actually working for the nonprofit. Uh, go take video. Um, you can brand yourself along with the organization. But use, I guess the best thing to do is use these devices. Use, use iPhones, use Android phones, record video, and make it, uh, and get it out there. Make sure that your businesses or organizations have your accounts, your named accounts, uh, own them, set them up now, uh, and, and just, you know, it doesn't have to have a budget. It's really about time. Uh, and having something out there is, again, better than nothing. Um, and you'll, people will tell you, hey, you think and you need to do this. You need to work on lighting. Uh, if you do shoot some stuff, um, please let me know. I'd love to follow any of your businesses. So if we're not following you now, um, send me an invite, and I'll help build your network. And hopefully, you'll follow us back, and we can and we can grow each other's business. All right. I believe that wraps right, up. up. I apologize for the echo. I apologize for the echo. Oh, it was. It's not bad. All right. Well, thank you, Tom, and thank you, everyone, for attending today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody in Meerkat world. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye. Thank you for your time.